Welcome everybody to episode 145 of the China Show. We're very happy to have you here today. I'd like to thank、um, my mom. We've made it this far. My the academy. <laughs> 145. It's a、yeah. long way. Anyway, guys,、uh, we've got a big one for you today. China is being caught out in an embarrassing lie once again. A few. Well, a couple. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a fun one. So let's saunter right into it. We're going to start out with what's new, where we tell you what's new、uh, with regards to China, and.、Um, What do you recall about driving in China, Simil? I recall it being the most harrowing thing in the entire world. I will say this: that Vietnam was a maybe more dangerous than China, but no, China was more deadly though. Because in Vietnam, it's much slower riding. Is、right? it? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely slower. But in、mm. China, you got highways and stuff, right? Which is right, very right. scary. I found well, when you drive in China, it's、uh, it's slow going. Yeah. All the time. That's yeah, why yeah. on our little one, two, five、in、bikes, we could always be faster than、yeah. anyone on the road. But、um, the one thing that's terrible about China is it's all about aggressive driving. Yeah,、um, and it's selfish driving. It's the opposite of defensive driving. Yeah, you you will find if you want to merge, nobody lets you merge.、No. You have to actually force your way in. You do.、Uh, uh, a little anecdote. I was with my dad in the car.、Mm-hmm. And I was in my, you know, that Lex blue Lexus I had. Yeah. So I was sitting in a traffic circle for probably about I don't know twenty minutes in、mm-hmm. a traffic circle in the traffic circle, right? And people are just making four lanes of traffic in front of you, right? Yeah. And my dad just was—he like lost his mind. He was just like, "What? What is going on?" He just sure, like couldn't、sure. believe how people could be so rude. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and it's just how it is. It's brutal. And. When you grow up in that environment, or at least that's that's where you learn to drive, you get that experience.、Yeah. It's you just have to adapt. It never doesn't become stressful, though. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's the thing, though. You adapt, so you become that kind of person.、Yeah. You're like, do not let people in. Yeah, I know. Normally, when you drive around, you merge. Anyway, what we've got here behind us is a clip of that exact kind of situation and how people what they have to resort to. Yeah, to allow、wild. themselves to actually get in. Look at this. Yeah, I think that's it's, pretty clever. It's pretty awesome. Pe- people will probably get mad at this, but that's pretty hilarious. Yeah, like that's so spot on. By the way, that is the perfect car that would do that. Yeah, of course. I saw a lot of those with dead people in them. By the way, oh sure,、uh, those those things crumple like crazy. That's like the upgrade of the bread box van that you get around China. Oh yes,、like、yes, the yes, cheapest yes. car you can buy. One second, I need to get the remote over here. It's a little louder.、Oh, it is a little bit loud, isn't it? Yeah, I was、good、testing call, some、call. some. Audio stuff. We're messing around again with the、uh, studio、mm. over here, because you know, this is the studio. Phil yeah, Collins, big your fan. favorite, yeah. <laughs> Actually, not a fan. Yeah.、Um, so, yeah. as we all know,、uh, it's now year of the rabbit, everybody. Yes. Tunian Quaila, as they say. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, there's this thing that、uh, you see in China. It happens a lot、um, when the year changes. They put out a lot of political cartoons, or I shouldn't say political. They just put out cartoons and stuff、yeah. where they'll have like, because it was previously year of the tiger. So they have like the tiger walking out, giving a high five to the rabbit, like, "Okay, it's your turn now." Like tag him in type thing. Now, I want to ask you a question. Sure. If you're talking about like Animal Kingdom, right?、Mm. I wish we had a picture of that、uh, political cartoon or、yeah. whatever cartoon. Yeah, those. Was- Because what? Would actually happen? Do you think in the animal kingdom, if a rabbit were to high five a tiger? Yeah, I mean, you grew up in、uh, Africa. You saw a lot of like lions and like very vicious animals, right? Well, it's pretty、Out、obvious. The, game. the tiger would just eat the rabbit. Right, right. So you would probably, you know, that cartoon. You would probably relegate it to a cartoon.、Mm. You wouldn't take it into real life. You wouldn't take、yeah. that next step, right? Yeah. So what we have over here is、um, a ceremony to welcome in the the year of the rabbit, and they thought this would be a fantastic idea to to have this event where they have a a tiger to make the cartoon real. Yeah, like a baby tiger,、yeah. and the rabbit comes in. Now it's the year of the rabbit, right? Yeah. What do you think is going to happen? 
It's hard to tell. <laughs> I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's could could anyone could anyone have predicted it though? Nature's so uncertain. I know, right? Oh, uh, the fickle, fickle thing. It's kind oh. of. I mean, it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just it's just to be expected, isn't it? Yeah, you know, here's the thing, though. I know um, because my dad has a lot of history in in sort of wildlife, tigers, yeah, and, and all that nonsense. Yeah, he used to do game capturing and things, and he would always comment, you know, and watch TV shows, and there's like a lion in the TV show, and there's like a person walks up to the lion or something. He would tell us how they do that is they feed the lion first and make sure that it's so full that it's that just makes so much sense. not interested in eating yeah. anything. That's what they do for the tigers in the zoo. Like in the, uh, you know, the Chinese um, the circus acts, like yeah. those tent circuses, they make sure it's sedated and full. Yeah. So it won't attack anyone. Yeah, yeah. So I'm pretty sure this baby tiger was hungry. Yeah, it's like pre-meal time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hold on, before yeah. you play that. Actually, let's play it one more time. Okay. Then I want to get some official commentary. Okay. So go back to that. I just want to, yeah, maybe right there. What did official Chinese state media have to say about that? Did they? I think there was a Rick, a guy named Rick that was on uh, Chinese oh, state oh, media. This? What did he? Yeah, what did he say about that? Oh, he what? said this. Wow, so good. Oh, what? <laughs> I mean, to first to make the mistake of feeding the tiger live. <laughs> yeah. Right. And trying to make this fun thing for everyone to watch, like this live event. Yeah. But then to make that mistake and then to say it's good? I know. I don't know about that. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> That's the commentator making that noise, not the rapid. It's a little too much for me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, before we continue, guys, a very quick word from our sponsor. So, yes, the hack was just completed and we got all of the data, all the users, everyone has been compromised. Excellent. I'm going to transfer it over to the other guys. Oh, hey, I just heard we got some really good data from these people. It's going to give us a lot of money. Let's get messed up, mate. We're rich. <laughs> I can't wait to tell them how much we've got. Guys, guys, there's an emergency over here. Look at these numbers. Someone's hacked us. They've gotten into our files. We're losing calm, calm a lot. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Listen, we can sort this out. I promise. I think we're going to have to call in Surfshark. Hmm. Sounds like I'm needed again. In the end, Good for the Earth Corp was able to recover not only most of their data, but they knew that next time if they use Surfshark, this wouldn't happen again. This video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. People at Surfshark care about security so much that they created a VPN app that secures your data with industry-leading measures by using uncrackable encryption and the most secure VPN protocols. It provides IP and DNS leak protection so that nobody can find out where you're connecting from. What can I tell you about Surfshark? Well, it's fast and easy to use as you connect to the server that offers you the best speed by default. It's jam-packed with features that go way beyond the basics, and it's easy to install and run on unlimited devices on one single subscription. You might want to use it for traveling. You can overcome location-based price discrimination on plane tickets and car rentals by connecting to VPN servers in different countries. Or you can use it for streaming and entertainment as well. With Surfshark, you'll be chilling in style as you unlock unlock 15 largest Netflix country libraries, including the US and Japan, by merely connecting to a server in the right country. Not only is it keeping you safe, but it's also super convenient to unlock content. If you go to surfshark.deals slash ADV podcast and use the code ADV podcast, you'll get 83% off a two year plan plus three extra months free. So not only are you supporting the channel, you're protecting your connection, opening your world up to a whole lot of content out there, and you're also getting a fantastic deal. So go to surfshark.deals slash ADV podcast and use the code ADV podcast. Get that 83% off the two year plan and those three extra months for free. Thanks. Cool. Well, thanks for that. Why are we in the abyss? 
I like that. Oh, okay. Is it time for Soft Power Hour? Yes. It is. Yes, it is. All right, guys, it's time for our main segment of the show, Soft Power Hour. This is where we tell you all about what China is trying to do to change your minds. And uh, through various means, whether it's through propaganda or infiltrating your media or whatever the case, this time we're heading back to AI. Okay. Said AI. <laughs> well, first of all, we keep hearing about AI in our daily lives, right? Yes. We hear about chat GPT. We hear about open mm. AI. We hear about like it, this huge threat of AI. It's a big deal. It is. It's massive. It's my next video. And uh, of course, China has been going on about how amazing its AI advances are and so on and so forth. And of course, China's foremost technological company, the top, the pinnacle of China's technology is Huawei. Huawei. <laughs> yeah. For all of you that uh, missed that, there was a Chinese propaganda ad where they got little kids to sing about Huawei. Yeah, like the Chinese government put yes. that out to try and boost Huawei's image. And, and then they removed it and said that they didn't do that. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Anyway, the fact of the matter is um, Huawei's AI is is this crazy thing. But we thought before we did that, let's just uh, take a look at a little something over here. It's kind of important. I'll play it here in the background. What you're looking at here is something called MetaHumans, which is an Unreal Engine plugin. Now, what it's what it's meant for is to develop very realistic-looking humans. It's amazing. Yeah. Now, it's something you could use in game development. It's something you can use in feature films. It's something you, any. There's so many applications yeah. for it, right? But it's basically you pay for it. It's a. I'll play in the background here. It's a very advanced toolkit, which. Um, if you give it a second, you will see some of the tools where you get to um, basically. So realistic. Yeah, it's very realistic. Where's the audio on this? Did you scrub it out? No. Nope. I used oh. the clip you sent me. Okay. Oh, no, never mind. But here you can see how you have all the um, tools to add wrinkles, change exactly the facial features. You can make it exactly like it is for your application. Incredible, right? Mm hmm. I am a metahuman, the next generation of digital human powered by Unreal Engine. Metahumans are high fidelity digital characters created by you, the user, on our new content creation platform, Metahuman Creator. I have eight levels of detail and have been tested on a wide range of hardware platforms, from feature film to mobile. Pretty amazing, actually. It's, it's really good. Anyway, that's Unreal. Everybody knows the Unreal Engine. <clears throat> now, Imagine, given this incredibly uh, versatile and powerful technology, metahumans, which we can see here, imagine if China's biggest technological company went and... Uh, the pinnacle. Yeah. So they went and they bought, or at least they pirated, or they copied, or they used metahumans. Here, they've got the 64-bit development... Um, so it's exactly what you just showed. Yeah, it's yeah. the same toolkit. The amazing yeah, look, thing that we just saw. Unreal metahumans. Right. Right. What do you think that they could create with such a powerful tool? The, with Huawei, with the power of the Chinese government behind them? Oh, but billions, be amazing. billions of dollars. Billions of dollars. Let's take a look. What did they create with it? Hi, Sarah. How old are you? I'm trying to speak. Yes, old. You're 26 years old. That's it. You yes. look younger. Yes, younger and beautiful. What do you do at Huawei? What's your job? I am AI. Sarah AI. And uh, where do you live? Bangkok. You live in Bangkok? Oh, Bangkok's a great city. Yes. Okay, so by now, I think pretty much everyone that's part of our audience knows about Sara AI. Yeah. I mean, it's a soundbite of ours, yes, right? Yes, young girl and beautiful. Um, there's a reason we brought it up. There's a very big reason we brought mm. this up. Now, we've been making fun of this for a while now because it's very obvious that it's just a Thai lady standing behind there somewhere with a microphone and basically replying to, to anyone, people. Anyone yeah. that walks up. Now, here's the context of this. This was um, a Huawei Connect 2022, which is like their big, I suppose it's their big technological expo. And they held it in Bangkok. Mm -hmm. All right. They had a bunch of foreign vloggers and, um, you know, important people go there. To it, it, not just foreign vloggers. They had like real business uh, like uh, representatives that were supposed to be making country links between China and their country. 
Yeah. It was huge. Yeah, no, it's it's big. And they had, uh, you know, all the TV stations went there and stuff. And yeah. you could see Huawei was showing their cloud technology. They're showing their little robot knockoffs and their, all their other things that they do yeah. and their cellular technology and everything. They were showing this all. And this was one of the things they showed was the Sara AI. Now, let's take a look. We've all seen this clip before. Let's look at some more here because this gets important. Yeah, thank you. And can you can you speak Thai? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how many languages does she speak already? Uh, uh, now you can speak uh, uh, just English and uh, Thai. Okay. Oh, yeah, this I is important. I just need to say something real quick. Sure. So to catch everyone up, mm -hmm. they didn't develop their own technology. They used the, the MetaHumans Meta -humans, yeah. toolkit, right? Yeah. Then they put it out there. Remember that when that one Shell Barrett was actually talking to her? Yeah. I was always under the impression, and this is the reason we memed on it, was that this was some sort of gimmick, like everyone's walking around this expo and there's just a fun little thing. You know, yeah. like you go to a... You go to a zoo or whatever, and they have like a, an animal, like a 3D animal that you can talk to, but actually it's a guy with a microphone, right? Yeah, it's exactly that. It's oh. exactly that. So I'm, I'm thinking, okay, the joke's kind of like, yeah, it's fun. You can talk to a booth babe, right, yeah. while you're there. And it's like pretending to be like AI thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. But And that's why we made fun of it, because it's yeah. just kind of a, a cheap gimmick, right? Yeah. But then you have the the Huawei director guy for the AI thing yes, putting on the demo. And this is the deep cut that one of our subscribers found. Mm-hmm. Putting on a demo for a, I believe, a German guy, right? Yeah. To demonstrate this technology. And all of a sudden, it's not a gimmick anymore. No. Now I realize something. Something clicked in my head and I said, they're actually trying to say that this human being, this Thai lady, talking on a microphone, literally mapped to this MetaHumans toolkit that they didn't develop. No. Is their new AI technology that China is using for GDP numbers and AI the leader of the world's AI, all yeah, this yeah. kind of demo stuff. That's how fake this is. Yeah, wait, and wait, we have proof. Yeah. We have proof. Okay, so um, let, let's first of all pay attention to the fact that the Huawei spokesperson told this um, journalist over here that um, she only speaks English and Thai right now, the mm. Huawei Cloud AI. Which, how does that even make sense? Yeah, I mean, developed in China, yeah. supposedly. Yeah. Um, why would it speak only English and Thai? Okay, we'll get it. We'll get to that in a minute. But uh, uh, we also can uh, give her some new this kind of skill to learn Chinese, to learn uh, even learn, learn the less learn, learn German, learn Germanese. We can do do, do this kind of things. Perfect. But uh, uh, what you can see, uh, this is about the language. This can like uh, this kind of we can we say it's the. Uh, natural uh, language learning, mm -hmm. okay? But uh, in other things, you can see like, uh, if the movement, mm -hmm. the movement. Sarah, yes. so can you see my hand? Yeah. So can you count <laughs> by one, two, three, four, five? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, let's start with one, two, two three, three, four, four. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now here's the pinch, guys. Over here we have uh, Sara AI. We went and found on the Chinese internet this, the Sara AI before the conference. Okay. So this was like a, a short time before the conference. Here's the demonstration of this Sara AI. Let's yeah. take a look. Yeah. Hi, Sara. Hello. Welcome to the Huawei exhibition. What can I do for you? Can you please introduce yourself? I am the first virtual human employee of Huawei Cloud. My Chinese name is Yan Shen. You can also call me Sarah. I'm created by Huawei. Okay, now that's very important to pay attention. Yeah, for sure. Her Chinese name is Yuan Shen. Okay, yeah. let's just play this for you. Proprietary yeah. digital content pipeline. Hi, 大家好,我是华为云首个虚拟数字人员工云生 Hey, yo, Metaverse 一来临,你的网络行不行,时言高,卡顿高,一不小心掉线了,与原生,一张网,全球连线大容量,好秒级,超流畅,品质业务不打烊 
Okay, there's a couple of things we have to point out here. Yes. First of all, the very badly computer voice, like, first, first of all, all right, this whole idea that they have developed this AI yeah. is a joke. Yeah. Okay, this so-called AI that they have here, they're like, what's your name? Dude, you can literally pull out your iPhone and say, hey, Siri, what's your name? What? Have they... Have they not realized for the past decade, people have been able to use this kind of technology, Th this, but better. And especially this whole idea of text-to-speech. Yeah. Been around since this, like, this late 70s. Yeah. All right? You can do this with a home computer, with a sound blaster. Dude, you know when I was a matter. kid, mm -hmm. we used to call, like, if there was, like, bad weather, you could call this weather thing. It was, like, the weather service is blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was in, like, 92. Sure. You know? So this is very... Not cutting edge technology. It no. looks like trash. Yes. Okay, that looks. And they didn't develop it. No, they didn't even develop it. They're using a, like Unreal Meta Human stuff. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, this is the the Sarah AI that they were expecting to release. Yes, this is important. So, and this is, by the way, this is before the com the, the conference where the yeah. guy said, "Oh, she can only speak Thai and English." Yeah. Okay. So this is the bad thing. And it's important to pay attention to her Chinese name there, okay, which is Yun Sheng, which you will see when this next presentation, which also came before the, the presentation yeah. in Thailand. Let's Chinese see. name is Yan Shen. You can also call me Sarah. I'm created by Huawei's proprietary digital content pipeline. So here was another big, you can see it's Huawei Connect. This was for the Chinese, uh, this was in China, okay, for the Chinese uh, market. And they introduced the Sarah AI um, there as well. It looks a bit different, but it's the same one. You'll see why. Hi, 大家好，我是华为云首个虚拟数字人员工云生。See, she said she yeah, said her name, uh, Yun Sheng. So it's the same AI because yeah. the Chinese name for Sarah AI is Yun Sheng. Mm. Now this. Is not AI either. This is pre-rendered, so it's been motion captured. It's been pre-rendered. It's ready. The guy just says something, and then they play this on stage. It's a video. Yeah, it's a video. It's like a pre-rendered cutscene. Yeah, it's not the actual not gameplay AI. footage. There's yeah, no AI. Yeah. Hey, and, yo, and this. This is all pre-recorded. Yeah. Yes, young girl and beautiful. So, <laughs> so to, to yeah. recap this, and I think this is the greatest modern analogy we can have for something we've been trying to say for how many years now. Mm -hmm. When you do business in China and get things developed in China and you expect some sort of, um, how to say, like creativity behind a product or something yeah. like this. And so you dump tons and tons of money into this because the GDP figures are up, the, the investment figures are up. This is the future. This yeah. is actually what you get because this is not some little, this is not some middle school project. No, this is Huawei. This is the top company in China yeah. for this stuff. The most technologically advanced company in China. This is that company that's pushing all those numbers up, that's yes. pushing all of this. Well, you should invest in China because of the, this is the future of tech. Yeah. You can see when Winston and I are not talking shit when we say that everything is fake. Mm. Everything from government GDP figures to COVID numbers to everything is always fake. And we've seen this over and over again. I mean, you saw it when you were doing uh, e-bike import stuff yeah. for those people. Everything ends up being fake. When we started do, we were looking into motorcycle manufacturers, mm -hmm. the emissions equipment was fake. Yes. Everything is fake. It's fake. And this is like a great analogy of this in modern day is that when you see people like huge, huge leaders in their 70s and 80s, these big opinion leaders and these economic forums and things that are trying to drive more investment into China again, continuing mm -hmm. to do this, they're basing all their stuff on falsehoods. Yes. And this is a great example of that. Why, why are we even having Huawei in the same breath as Apple or Microsoft or any of these other companies? They don't compete. They're not even on the same not even on this in the same stratosphere. They're in no. like a different realm yeah, of, yeah, sure. of fake. Sure. And this again, is a great example. It's a great example. Again, remember that the Huawei um, spokesperson over here said, hmm, let's see. What can like how many languages can she speak? All right, so this this is now very recently. This was, I believe, in, in December. It's whenever, like right at yeah, the end of last yeah, year. Yeah. 
So how many languages does you speak already? Uh, uh, now you can speak uh, uh, just English and Thai. Okay, now I can speak just English and Thai. Yet, like, months before that, she can speak Chinese. Hey, yo, Metaverse 以来临,你的网络行不行? Oh, that's cringe. It, whoa, you're giving her too much credit. Yeah. She can't speak shit because yeah. this is a video. It's not even an AI. No, it's not an AI. There, right. So I, I want everyone, just, just in case you just tuned in, yeah. in the end, at the Thai Expo, the most important thing for them, for the yeah. demo, they got lost in their own sauce. They, got, they drank their own Kool-Aid. They never had an AI to begin with. So they no. literally had to have a mocap woman Yes. With a Unreal Engine. Yes. 3D model that they didn't make. No. Speak, it fit, like pretending she's a robot, putting on a fake robot voice to people as they walked up and then still tried to sell it In a Thai AI. accent because yeah. she's a Thai, a Thai that booth hired. babe that yeah. they hired. So she has a Thai accent and she can only speak English and Thai. And, and that's I, their cloud. Their mm -hmm. Sarah AI can only speak English and Thai because... Right. It's actually just a real Thai person. So I, again, I don't want anyone to think this is just about this. This is not a big elaborate joke that we're making fun of Sarah AI anymore. This is very indicative of something you have to understand. Mm. When people are telling you that China has the future of the internet, China is the future of AI, you have investment firms here in the US that are telling Americans, mm -hmm. hey, you know, don't forget about that zero COVID stuff. They, they drop those restrictions. China's back on the Oh yeah, the what was it, invest in Chinese internet? You should, as an American, invest in Chinese internet. You should invest in Chinese AI. This is the future, right? It's because the people giving that advice are out of touch. They're out. They're just. They're old. They don't understand technology. Not that being old means you don't understand technology. No, but it's, but it those ones helps. are. <laughs> yeah. Those those particular yeah. like Schwabs and stuff that yes. are telling you um, this is what you need to do is invest in this because they see something like this. Right. And they're told this is AI and they believe yeah. it. They're like, oh, that wow, that's impressive. It's I don't like, know look, why wow. You, I don't know how you could be impressed by this. But here's mm. the deal. Mm -hmm. The people that are telling you to invest in this yeah. are the people interfacing with Barrett's. Yeah. You know, Barrett is the guy that talked to Younger and Beautiful. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. It's the it's the guy, the Dutch guy or whatever, right here. Yeah. He's not to say he's old or anything, but he's talking to this Huawei representative. And he's buying it. And it, there's, I mean, anyone under, I, I don't want to use age. I'm not going to use age. Anyone with a basic understanding of technology. Sure. Like a basic, just a basic, basic. You could throw a 13-year-old out there. Yeah. And interface, with, talk to that Huawei representative in, in that booth. Mm -hmm. And just, they would just crack up laughing. Yeah. It's, they'd be like, is, are you trolling? Yeah. Because this is, the people making our decisions for for people like us, the people who are making our economic decisions or giving us economic advice or trying to drive more investment towards China, mm -hmm. talking about Westerners here, yeah, are the people that have literally no idea what's going on. There, no one's coming to us who lived over a decade in China and saw how fake half the stuff is there. Mm -hmm. No one's talking to people like us or asking for our advice. They're asking the advice of these big bankers and these big people that are like, yeah, this is the future. Because they go to demos like this and they believe it. And it's just... I'm flabbergasted. You know, what's interesting is how these myths perpetuate throughout um, society. Yeah. Remember the whole cashless society yeah. bullshit? Yeah. Okay. I don't know how, uh, I don't know, don't know why this took off, but there was this push and everyone was saying, look, wow, China's so amazing. They have a cashless society. You can go out, you, you can buy things without cash, use your phone or whatever. And I bought, it, bought into it too because I was living there. Yeah. I was using Me cash. Too. I was like, by, well, by the way, I was using cash yeah. all the time in China. Still use I still, yeah. yeah. But as soon as I moved to America, I haven't used cash at all here. It is the most cashless society. <laughs> yeah, the Everywhere you go, you're tapping your card, <laughs> yeah. you know, or yeah. you're using a debit card or a credit card or, or whatever. Apple the hell. Pay? Or, yeah, your phone. Or Android Pay? But the last time I used cash in America was when I first got here. Yeah. Venmo, Cash App. You don't, nobody uses, uses these things. You want cashless? So it's weird. It's like, a cashless society is somehow being impressed by China saying it's a cashless society. Yeah, yeah. And it's the same with this shit. They're like, oh, look at this, Sarah AI. Yeah. It's amazing. It can answer my questions. Hi, Sarah. It's literally a woman behind a booth. Yeah, and even in this form where they show, this is the legitimate one that they show here, right? Yeah. Take a look. Hello, welcome to the Huawei exhibition. What can I do for you? I mean, this is already bullshit. Yeah. Can you please introduce yourself? I am the first virtual human employee of Huawei Cloud. I, I mean, mean, they were so embarrassed by yeah. this yeah. that they couldn't employ it at their expo. No, they, they had to use a booth babe instead. Yeah. But dude, 
you see what is what is impressive about this? You, you ask it a question, it gives you an answer. Alexa can do that for you. Yeah. Google could do that for you. With more of a human touch. Siri can do that yeah. for you. It doesn't sound as robotic and, and nope. stupid as this one. They have men <laughs> managed the yeah. biggest company in China for this kind of stuff. The yeah. leading By the, the way, th- this this footage is twenty twenty two. Yeah. It's last year yeah. before the well, it's ex- only a couple months ago. Yeah, yeah a few months before ago. the expo. Yeah, yeah, a couple of months ago. This is not like you're looking at old stuff here, no. guys. This is this is bleeding edge, cutting That's, edge Huawei technology. That was my point. Is that we're talking about the bleeding edge here? Yeah, the bleeding edge of Chinese. Uh, I don't want to reiterate this too much, but you're investing in this, guys. Like mm. it's all a sham, right? Yeah. Here's the deal: mm. in a podcast with a hundred, with two hundred thousand subscribers, right? Mm-hmm. Where we're talking to you guys live right now, in the help of some subscribers that wanted to go look into this stuff, we in a week managed to literally dismantle all of Huawei's MetaHumans program. Yeah. It's all fake, yeah. and I would love to know if there's any sort of like transparent data how much money was invested in this from people abroad. Yeah. I would love to know how many people in their investment profiles to their banks, ad- from the advice of their investment managers, in America even, just America yeah. alone, how many millions of dollars were invested into this yeah, program? Into China's I, w- I would AI. love to know. I would love to know. Because this is what you got for China's AI if you, you invested you, in this. You got scammed. You know what you paid for? It was Baijiu and cigarettes and corruption. Yes. Because that's how China works. Absolutely. I don't know why... People are not waking up to this yet. It's absolutely crazy that two normal guys. We have we don't have any expertise in like exposés of tech companies. No. It took a week to figure this out. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> stop. Stop investing. Stop name investing name in all this nonsense. Is Yan Shen. You can also call me Sarah. I'm created by Huawei's proprietary digital content pipeline. Then that's also just a lie. Yeah. It's a huge lie. It's it, she's not created by Huawei's it's, digital cloud bullshit. It's unreal. They're using the <laughs> Unreal plugin. It's it's an off the shelf product that <laughs> yeah, you can buy. You, can do you it. could do it right now. Yeah. You can just go and buy it. You could create your own human and tell it what to say, and it speaks for you. Yeah. You could you can do everything with that yourself. Yeah. Um, so they used another product, and you know my, the skeptical part of me thinks that they probably pirated the software anyway cuz they're using a development build of it we don't know now, that's the skeptical yeah. part of me i'm just like so maybe I would, I would agree with you. maybe they <laughs> licensed or they they bought the the metahumans plugin but at the end of the day it's not what they made unreal doesn't belong to china it doesn't belong to huawei you know last week when i didn't have a voice yeah. What I was doing talking through a TTS was literally this. Yeah. Like what China is trying to do through Huawei with this program and get millions of investment dollars is what I did for free last week yeah. on, on the air. I know. It's crazy. But just a reminder, once again, you can look in the top corner. They're so sloppy. They didn't even remove the the Unreal MetaHumans. Um, you know, it says they're 64-bit development um, PCD 3D, which probably means direct 3D. Um, they, they didn't even remove the heading out of that. Yes. So it's so chabador. Yes. They couldn't even do that part. Huawei, how much money did you get from from people in different countries for this? Yeah, Huawei didn't invent shit. They never no. have. And they've just always been a knockoff company. Yeah. You know what they're good at is getting people to write patents. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's what they do. It's a patent farm. That's what they do. And everyone thinks, oh, they wrote these patents. That means they invented shit. No, they just copied other people's. They They haven't made one thing. They found other people's technology and wrote a patent for it. You did a video on this. They haven't made anything No, we're waiting. I'm waiting. They built their entire company on intellectual property theft. Yes. Right from the beginning all the way till now. Look at the Huawei flagship stores in China. It's literally a a take-for-take copy of an Apple store. It is. And they're still doing it. Yeah, they look at their Huawei Matebooks yeah. or whatever. They're just a, a MacBook Air or whatever. It's insane. <laughs> and we're yeah. still investing in that shit. Yeah, yeah. It's not the future. It's the past. And it's theft. Yeah, it is. Unfortunately, the more you invest in that kind of thing, the more you're actually going to stifle innovation in tech. Because think about it. If you're a tech developer, like you're, let's say you're a kid that really wants to get into like actual development. Yeah. And you see that the money is not there. In fact, some bullshit patent farm in China, like Huawei, can pay all these people to not have expertise, yes. not do any work, yes. not get a real education. I mean, half the people freaking buy their degrees anyway over there, right? Right. The, you're in a situation where there's no motivation anymore. Why? Who, who are you going to work for? Yeah. It's crazy. It's just dumb. It's bad for the tech industry yeah. um, to, to invest in, in companies like Huawei. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on from this ridiculous. 
from this ridiculous nonsense. I do want to say that mm-hmm. that will be clipped out. Um, if you guys want to, a lot of people are like, can we please share this clip? Yeah. That'll be on China Fact Chasers yeah. probably like next week or something. So yeah. you can share that specific video. That is a proper expose of, of Huawei's Meta, MetaHumans project. Yeah, well, it's AI. MetaHumans yeah, is sorry. the thing you buy. AI using MetaHumans. I'm yeah, I like sorry. how they also I'm throw gonna call in the, the, the MetaHumans project because that's what it is. Yeah, it is. It's MetaHumans project. <laughs> Oh, man, if only they could ever do something original. No. I want them to, yeah. you know? I, I honestly do. I want to be able to say, look, China, uh, Huawei invented something. Yeah, that'd look, be wonderful. they've actually contributed rather than steal. Yes. I'd love to say that. You know what's right in line with that is this. Yeah, what's this? This bothered the absolute piss out of me. Okay, explain. This, okay. Is, all, this is all you. I see a headline <laughs> like this, and this is exactly in line with what we're talking about. Mm. You were talking about investment in things that don't need to be, shouldn't be invested in, right? One of those is the Chinese auto industry. And it's something that we have been so disappointed by so many times, not just personal ownership of Chinese vehicles, because we, we've had that as I well. Bought in, a, in we China. both yeah. bought, actually, no, yours, yours is a joint venture one. Yes, but not just cars, we're talking about everything. The motorcycles, every vehicle. yeah, we've, everything. We probably yeah. bought 30 Chinese vehicles. That's true. Right. Brand new, by the way, bought right. brand new cars in China. Chinese, I bought a 100% Chinese car. Yes. You bought a joint venture Suzuki and Chinese yeah. uh, company, Lingmu or whatever, right? Yeah, Lingmu Suzuki. Yeah. Um, so anyway, long story short, mm-hmm. this is the, the industry that people keep talking about. This is the next big thing, right? Right. And we've just seen the piss quality, piss poor quality sure. of, Ch- of the Chinese auto industry. And it hasn't really improved. And that's the problem is that just because they're flooding the market Mm -hmm. with these vehicles doesn't mean that it's anything worth writing home about, right? So this is exactly what I'm talking about. When you see investment uh, profile people saying you should invest in Chinese AI technology, you also see articles like this. This is in Bloomberg. It says the U.S. hasn't noticed that China-made cars are taking over the world, okay? And it says the country is poised to become number two exporter of passenger vehicles, surpassing the U.S. and South Korea and risking new tensions in trading partners and rivals, right? So you look at this headline and you go, wait, what have I been missing? Like, because yeah. I'm, I'm a China watcher. You are too, right? Like, I've just been blindsided. I've been, I haven't been paying attention long enough, you know? And you read through the article and I pasted it in the, in the description. Yeah. And what it actually is, is that China is, they've made too many domestic vehicles. They've made too many low cost, bad quality vehicles and they flooded their own market Mm -hmm. and they have excess stock. Yeah, because Chinese people do not buy Chinese cars. No, if if they have the If they have the the choice. Never. People with the means. Yes. Yeah. So they have this huge influx. It's kind of like the whole shared bike situation. They've made too much crap, Mm -hmm. right? And they have to take this crap and they have to offload it onto other countries that they've made economic deals with, right? Right. So I was reading through some of the comments and people in Canada and the UK and people in England, they go, I've never seen a Chinese car in my life. What is, what is this article talking about? Yeah. Until you read the article. And what it is, again, they flooded these kind of third world markets with the, all these crappy cars, right? And nobody is celebrating this. This isn't actually, it's actually a, an indicator of a downfall of the Chinese economy. Because yeah. what it is, is they've saturated their own market with stuff that nobody wants. Mm-hmm. They have to offload it almost at a loss in a way to all of these other countries, to people that don't even necessarily want them anyway. They already have economic bar, like deals with the Chinese government that they ha- kind of have to take this stuff in. Yeah. Right. So you're in a situation here where it's actually a sign of Chinese economy doing bad things it's going down they're mm. making too much stuff that they can't recoup their costs on yeah right? they have to sell it at a loss so the u.s hasn't noticed that china made cars are taking over the world well no it's actually the opposite it's china nobody wants the china made cars and they're forced to buy them basically it's an interesting situation because um the like you say chinese cars end up in um kind of developing markets so yeah. for instance south africa where i'm from you can buy chinese cars yeah. there. they've got the great walls and stuff yeah. like that there. australia as well yeah but, Weirdly enough. Yeah, I mean, well, Australia belongs to China, so they're just like, they you better to, yeah. sell our stuff <laughs> yeah. here, okay? Otherwise, you know, yeah. we're, we're going to stop importing your wine or whatever. They're like, <laughs> right. oh, please, master, give us a break. <laughs> right. Anyway, quite seriously, though, in South Africa, um, we we always get the, the crap cars. Like, we got the Tatas, you know, from India. Yeah, from like India, the, yeah. the Tata the, Nanos. The, no, we got the Tata Indica or whatever, which is like a, a pickup truck. Apps. Indica? I think it's Isn't in- that like a like a marijuana strain. I don't even know. Oh, okay. It's indica, indica, whatever. I remember when it was released. Sure. And uh, everyone was like, "Wow, how can it cost so little for like a pickup truck?" Or it's a piece of junk, falls <laughs> right. apart. Sure. Like you don't want it. Sure. Same with the the Chinese cars. Yeah. In in South Africa, p- 
people would rather buy like a, a 30 year old Toyota that's beat to shit than a brand new Chinese car. You see that in the, that's indicative in the uh, secondhand prices you've shown me. Yeah. You know, when we look stuff up, it's insane how much crap costs. Yeah. Compared to a new Chinese car. Yeah. Yeah. Because people want the old stuff that works. Yeah. The stuff that won't let you down and won't break. It's just yeah. the way it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, these these misleading headlines. That's what, that's what I was getting. Are at. really just annoying because you see them all over the place and it's part of this this artificial push to try and make people invest in china you're seeing it all over i don't know what's behind it i don't know who's behind it i think it's pretty easy to figure out it's people that have already invested in china they don't want to see their assets and their investments go by the wayside yeah but that's that's why you see all these headlines yeah. coming out and this massive push to hey it's time to invest in china and china is a great investment opportunity let's blah, forget blah, about blah. all the times they've stabbed us in the back yeah, let's forget know. about the the downturn in the economy yeah. right now. Let's forget about all the the big problems that they face. You know, the lockdowns destroyed it, supply chains. Let's also just forget about the huge housing crisis that's going on, the collapse of that. Yeah. You know, let's forget about the human rights yeah. abuses. All that stuff doesn't matter. Let's forget about the fact that they keep threatening to declare war on Taiwan. <laughs> let's forget about <laughs> the, the fact the that, that they are backing Russia and its <laughs> yeah. invasion yeah. of Ukraine. Let's forget about all this other junk and let's just move on type thing. It's yeah. really, really, it's really frustrating. It's insane. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. So, um, yeah, good good thing you pointed that out. That's an interesting picture that they chose there, by the way. Yeah, I thought that was yeah. kind of a cool animation. Yeah. I got the credit definitely. in there, so don't yeah, worry yeah, about yeah, it. Totally definitely. Fine. Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know. Wow, so good. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of like that. It, is kind of it also like reminds me of this a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know why. Anyway, um, let's let's move on from this this headline. I know it kind of irked you a bit, and it irked me yeah, too. Yeah, it's just it's tight. I yeah. thought it was right in line with that other the AI stuff. Yeah, um, we've actually got a pretty good um, uh, Walmart corner coming up. Before we do though, uh, do you guys know that we have a show on Monday? Um, just every Monday. Every Monday. Yeah. Full shot on home. And uh, well, if you missed out, here's oh, what you missed stop. out. I've seen the most horrific things in China. You're gonna lose your appetite. Yeah. I'm pretty sure about it. First of all, what's he doing? Pissing in the in the hot pot. I just took a swig of of human piss. Find your nearest frog. <laughs> you don't want to mess with ostriches, dude. Yeah. I just yeah. want to puke when I see you don't that like stuff. Oh, the noodles on the floor. Yeah, school, school school lunch situation here. Grab eggs. Obviously, run out of oil, yep. which is disgusting. There's a difference between gross and in rotten, disgusting <laughs> sure. horridness. I, like, oh. I know it's not food safety, but Woo. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> that's what you missed on Monday. Uh, we were talking about kind of food safety issues in China on Monday. Um, every week, something different. Uh, the whole show. Yeah, it's a show. Hour, hour and a half long show. It's a, it's like a VIP club, and we like to show you things we can't normally show on YouTube, so they don't make it into our main show, this show. Uh, it's not the chaff. It's not like the stuff. It's the stuff we can't show Yeah, we show just can't show. YouTube. Yeah, so we... <laughs> if you catch my drift. Yeah, so it's a lot of fun. We hope you can join us if you have the means. If Which, you do, yeah. head on over to uh, patreon.com forward slash ADV podcasts and join the Shaban Ho tier. We really hope to see you there, like I said, if you can. Yeah. Um, by the way, not only do you get the live shows every Monday, mm -hmm. you can also so watch all the other ones we've done already. We've yeah. done 30 shows now. We do it every week. We never miss a week. Mm -hmm. So you can catch up with all the past shows. We've covered everything from the worst expats we met in China with videos yeah. to food safety, to the sex doll industry, like inside really knee deep stuff that we can't show on YouTube. Yes. You go you go over there for it and it, we make it worth your while. Everyone that's on there. Oh, I actually had a, I, I want to do a little testimonial if you don't mind. Sure, sure. Go for it. Um, I just thought this was great. This is from a guy called Colonel Comfy who just joined last week, right? Mm -hmm. He says, hey, Matt and Winston, I joined Xiaoban Ho last week and was going through the previous episode and it's, episodes and it's been a blast. I'm blown away by how you, how you deliver entertainment gold every week and also act as an invaluable codex for decoding the enigma that is mainland China. You guys are real heroes and I'm proud to be able to support you. I thought that was really That's nice. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. We're very happy to have you as a part of the Xiaoban Ho uh, team and we would like you guys to join because you guys chat with us live on there it's an interactive event yeah. the whole time it's great anyway uh thank you and let's move on and we're yep. going to move on to wumao corner everybody this is where we talk about the haters now this is important uh this week uh there's been some some awful awful tragedy here in the states um specifically to do with the asian community um but it's important for us to talk about this, very important for us to talk about this, because there's this narrative. 
And there's a narrative out there that the Chinese government has been trying to push for a long time now, yeah. since the beginning of the pandemic. They've been trying to equate any criticism of the Chinese government's uh, handling of the COVID outbreak. Or anything. Or the Uyghur genocide yeah. or any anything bad. Mm. So they try to equate anyone criticizing the CCP for doing bad things to attacks on Asians abroad. Yeah. They try to make it like, oh, it's because you... Um, you know, say China is bad because of the COVID situation or China is bad because of the Uyghur situation, that some random guy is attacking uh, an Asian in San Francisco or in the oh, UK yeah. or wherever, right? Which is a, it's a very smart tactic on their side because they it's, can play the race card. It's they very can, immoral. It's incredibly immoral because, yeah. um, as I've mentioned in my, my previous video, the Chinese government and Chinese policy and what China does is not Asian. It's a country. It's a government. You know, Japanese people are Asian. Uh, Korean people are Asian. Vietnamese people are Asian. Indian people are Asian. Malaysian people are Asian. These are all Asians. Like, if I criticize the Malaysian government because it does something bad, that doesn't mean that people are going to start attacking Asian people around the world. You know, if I criticize the Japanese government for something, which I can do if I want, if I can say, oh, they're too heavy handed here or this this policy or they shouldn't be, um, you know, praying at that temple or whatever. If I criticize the Japanese government, that does not equal attacks on Asians in San Francisco. But the Chinese government has somehow managed to convince a huge group of people that criticizing them equals attacks on Asians abroad. Right. So there was this awful tragedy. There was this shooting in Monterey Park in California where some guy on Chinese New Year went into uh, two dance halls, you know, and this whole dancing thing is a very popular with elderly Chinese and Asian uh, people in general. This idea of going out and doing sort of uh, ballroom dancing or dancing, you see it in China everywhere, the yeah, Guangchang Wu and all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So as soon as there was news that there was a shooting, we had our regular crowd shuffle in. Um and try to blame it on criticism of China. So I'm going to... It's so ridiculous. Yeah. It makes me go crazy. Yeah. So I wanted to read this tweet verbatim because it hasn't been taken down or altered, even after being pointed out for, you know, more than a week now. But um, good old, uh, you know, Cyrus Jansen over here said, I woke up this Chinese New Year morning to read this horrific story. This could have been my family. What's the reason for these attacks? 100% the media and the conspiracy theories and racism it uses to teach Americans to hate China. Full explanation. Watch my video. Let me make money off of this my tragedy. Oh gosh. Like, first of all, remove the contents of the tweet. Yeah. To, to say, let's just say it said, oh, terrible shooting happened. Go watch my video. Go watch my monetized video. Yeah. What? Who does that? That's yeah. like psychopath shit. I mean, but the problem is, again, he blamed the shooting 100%. The media and the conspiracy theories and racism it uses to teach Americans to hate China is the reason for the shooting. That's his tweet. This is before there was any information about this. And even after it all came to light, he still hasn't removed this tweet or changed it or even corrected it. Do you know... I, I've talked to a bunch of Asian Americans yeah. about not not specifically just about this because this has been happening for a while, but specifically about the anti Asian hate movement thing, right? Yeah, and this there's a lot of people, uh, including us, that have been to demonstrations, right? Mm -hmm. That are totally legitimate. Yeah, but there have been ones that have been co opted by the CCP, and we've seen that through evidence, right? Yeah, this kind of rhetoric, like in this tweet, mm -hmm. is what scares the absolute shit out of Asian Americans and the Chinese diaspora in America. Because what happens is they see that not only are the Chinese agents that are that are sent here to harass them, not not only through Operation Fox Hunt, but through like neighborhood campaigns where they go and try to actually keep an eye on Chinese diaspora yeah. that may, might be anti-CCP. But when they see like Western American born looking, you know, like, you know, the, the I'm going to say white Americans, when they see white Americans yeah. that are supporting the CCP in this rhetoric it scares the absolute shit out of them. Yeah. Because then they're like, oh, well, I can't even criticize the CCP in America anymore. Yeah. Because it looks like 
uh, you know, not even a dissident or a diaspora from China. Now it looks like somebody born in America also supports Yeah, them. so for those of you who might be unaware of the situation, by the way, this is just one of the many tweets that came out, not only from the pro-CCP shills, but also from various uh, kind of politicians yeah. and so on that were saying like, oh, the anti-Asian hate, all the Sinophobia is causing this, you know, they were blaming it on people criticizing China. Uh, blaming it on everything. But here's the actual story is this mass shooting was actually, um, the perpetrator was actually Asian and actually an immigrant from China. Let's take a look. Um, this is when I heard the sound of the front door creaking closing and instantly followed by the sound of a metal object clinking together as if they were rubbing. That's when I turned around and saw that there was an Asian man holding a gun. The suspected gunman met his former wife at the Star Ballroom. His ex-wife showed CNN a copy of their marriage license indicating he was an immigrant from China. She told the network he was a truck driver at the time and could be quick to anger. The two divorced in 2006. Okay, so first of all, immediately uh, you can see that it's not... Uh, racism or American conspiracies or whatever the hell, Sinophobia or whatever. It was an Asian guy. An immigrant from China. Yeah. Here's the thing. This whole mass shooting thing is an American problem. Yeah. It is a problem in America and it needs to be fixed. I don't have a solution. I have a couple of theories of what can be done, but it's an American problem. Yes. So it's tragic and it needs to be sorted out and i believe everybody's trying their best to figure this out it's, it's the biggest hot button issue in america and both sides of the political spectrum are trying their best here to jump on it and see what they can do to fix it but at the end of the day it's an american problem it's not a race problem the race of the shooter doesn't matter it doesn't matter yeah it, it's it's a, an american problem america yeah. has too many mass shooting it's really messed up anyway two days later there was another mass shooting in california yep um and in this mass shooting, five Chinese nationals or five Chinese citizens, citizens yeah. that were working on uh, mushroom farms here in, in the States, in California, were shot too. But they were shot by a Chinese guy. Yeah. Right? right. Here's a little, little clip. Um, the, the consulate of China got involved. Our one-on-one -on -one visit was scheduled for 10 this morning, and the only thing I was allowed to bring into the jail was my driver's license to check my identity. No pen, no paper, no cell phone, no recording devices. My conversation with Cheng Li Zhao was in Mandarin. He does not speak English. So, again, this bullshit-like idea that um, these attacks against these mass shootings that happen on Chinese New Year are a result of Sinophobia or a result of criticizing um, China. It's just complete nonsense. Right. It's so obvious, though, that CCP and their, their sycophants, yeah. they want the shooters to be someone other than Asian so that they can say that because they don't care about human lives. They yeah. want to use tragedy to stop criticism of the Chinese government, and it's so apparent. Yeah. When you see people that are operating on behalf of at least promoting what the Chinese government wants, using tragedies like this before anything is known to, to further their agenda, you can. It, it's the truth is laid bare. Yeah. There's a reason we didn't bring this stuff up. This is an American issue, and the show is about China. We yeah. didn't bring this stuff up when it happened because it has nothing to do with China. Yeah. But it does have something to do with China when their sycophants are going out there and using human death and tragedy to further their agenda mm -hmm. for a genocidal regime. Yeah. It's really screwed up. You know, what else is screwed up is, again, um, when I posted this, because, you know, when it came to light that the guy was Asian, and the, for the first shooting, even before the second shooting had occurred, when it came to light that the guy was Asian, um, I put out a post and I replied to some of these guys and I just showed them the Crime Stoppers uh, bulletin because this is before the guy was even caught. Yeah, it's nothing, like, with, nothing to do with race no, or anything. No, they were like, this is the suspect. You know, we're looking for an Asian, um, an Asian male of sp this height and this weight. And, you know, this is what he looks like. And they released uh, photos of him from security cameras, right? I released that Crime Stoppers report and my tweets got flagged. It was from the police, right? And they, yeah. 
So it got flat and uh, Twitter sent me this. We put a warning message on these tweets because they might have sensitive content like nudity, sexual content, violence, gore, or hateful symbols. It wasn't a video of the violence. No. It was just so the crimes. I, I'll, the I'll show report. you right now what it was. I took the, the special bulletin attempt to identify this homicide from investigation. from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Yes. I put that, just that. And you can see it's got like a, we put a warning on this tweet. So this is obviously the result of my uh, tweets being flagged by all of these uh, sort of disgusting agents of the CCP. And they don't want this to be out there. Because look, another of my followers here posted it too. A couple of people did it. They took the same picture because it's it was the one that was going around. They posted it and they didn't get flagged. What's up, Twitter? Yeah. What's going on, Twitter? And I checked today my... Tweets are still flagged, but theirs aren't. Okay, so that means that the actual content itself is not bad. Okay, what's going on, Twitter? Yeah, because look, an official—that's an official Crime Stoppers bulletin. It's literally from the LA County Police Department. Yeah, it's—I just took their bulletin and I—I I put it as a reply to people that were saying, "Oh, this is sinophobia is causing." Yeah, this. the only reason you did this was because people were going around saying that it was it American was, racism. Yeah, and or anti-CCP rhetoric is causing yeah. this. Yeah, kind it's anti-Asian hate or whatever. Mm -hmm. And Twitter said that um, it might contain nudity. Okay, does it contain nudity? I don't think so, no. Sexual content? No. Nope. No. Does it contain violence? No, no it doesn't, nope. actually. It's just got pictures of the guy's face. Um, does it contain gore? Nope. Does it contain hateful symbols? No, it's literally an official bulletin from the cops. None of these things. But because the whole army that works for the Chinese government and all of its agents and sycophants and so on keep reporting my tweets as being offensive or, you know, full of whatever, they... Everything that it can be reported for, they reported for. Yep. Twitter, obviously, because it has an automatic system or whatever, just flagged my tweets. Yep. What's what's going on, Twitter? Do you have do you have people in the CCP in your department? What's going on? Yeah, I mean, I believe they must right, they must do because look, other people posted the exact same thing and they didn't get flagged. Yep. All right. So there's just proof of it right there, um, and it shows you, unfortunately, just how well the uh, the Chinese government manipulates. Yep. Our systems over here. Yes. Okay. First of all, they use Twitter and mm. YouTube and Facebook and all of that to generate this outrage. Yeah. So they go out there and they're like, oh, this American racism is what caused these mass shootings before they find out. Before who, they find out who did it, yeah. When it turns out it's an Asian, so it's not like anti-Asian hate crime. It's It was actually a domestic issue. This guy, from everything that I've read and heard, his ex-wife was there, he met her in that ballroom, you know, he was disgruntled with, you know, I don't know, relationship issues, and he just had issues, and he went and he shot, he tried to go to two places. Super screwed um, up, terrible, yeah. American Awful. issue. Yeah, and then the other guy working at the mushroom farms, it was like a workplace disgruntled worker situation, where he thought he was being treated unfairly and working too many hours, and so he went and he not only killed other Chinese citizens, but he killed uh, Americans too, right? I mean... It was a workplace disgruntled issue. It, yeah, it is Mexican Americans, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Mexicans and Americans, whatever. He just discrim indiscriminately killed people, okay, because he was pissed off at his workplace. He killed his coworkers. But that's at a state level. They get their sycophants to go out there and say that this is a due to criticism of the CCP. That's yeah. basically what they're saying. Yeah. So they get to use all these uh, Western social media to generate this outrage and make people think that there's some kind of conspiracy here that if you criticize China because of its poor handling of COVID, or you criticize China because of the Uyghur's uh, genocide and bad human rights atrocities, or you criticize China because of its, its IP theft or spying or, or any of its policies, you criticize the Chinese government, it equals mass shootings against Asians. And that's what, so they use it to generate the outrage. And then when it comes to light, like I said, that it's an Asian person and you put that out there, then they also use the same mechanisms of social media to censor that by getting yep. it flagged. Yep. By saying, oh shit, this is not convenient we, to our we narrative. We can't be wrong. Yeah, we better get this off. Right. Everybody, mass flag it. Get it taken down. Even if it's an official police bulletin, yep. doesn't matter. It gets flagged by bloody Twitter. Yep. With a warning. So it doesn't get spread out there because, you know, tweets that have a warning on, they won't just be like pushed this is, out. This is the level we're dealing with shit yeah. right now. It's You have sick, sick people working for the CCP mm. on American soil. Yeah. 
that are spreading this kind of message. Yeah. Now, I won't name names, but you, they know who they are. It's like, mm. it's, pretty, it's pretty messed up. It's really messed up. You know, don't take advantage of tragedy to further a, a, a an evil government's goal. Yeah, what are we calling them now? We're now calling them Iagos, by the way. And yes. I have a declaration. Yes. The now, you know, we the we're not going to say Wumaos anymore for for the uh, the Westerners. Yeah, the foreign the shills. So the foreign shills, we are now going to call Iagos because yeah. Tell me, Jafar isn't the CCP? Yeah, sure. Right. The Jafar is sitting there with his mass domination plans, trying to take over the world. Right. Mm-hmm. And Iago is the bullshit little annoying parrot in yeah. his ear. That's whispering him things and then also going out and parroting the CCP's narrative. Yeah, exactly. Tell me they're not freaking Iagos. They're All Iagos from now on. If you are an American or Western shill and you're working on behalf of the Chinese government or you're going through third party, you know, companies to spread their their ideas through your videos or yeah. tweets or whatever, you are an Iago. Yeah. And it must feel like shit. <laughs> because you know what's cool as fuck? What? Is being pro human rights yeah. and being chill with everybody of every race mm-hmm. and promoting democracy and liberty and making sure that everyone has an equal voice. That's yeah. way cool. Trust me, if you're trying to hook up with girls, <laughs> way cooler to be pro human rights than it is to be an Iago. Yes. Iago is the kid that everyone hates in sure. class, right? You need to go to like a special class to learn social development because don't be an Iago, it sucks. Right. That's why they became an Iago. This is very true. Okay. This is true. We now know the path of yeah, the Iago. The yeah. <laughs> Has to be. But yeah, yeah, if you're supporting the CCP yeah. and trying to push its bullshit rhetoric around the place, now you are an Iago. You are an Iago. Yeah. Okay. So we, we came up with something new. We did. All right. Is it time for World uh, Worldview? I think it, it is. is yeah. Okay. Time for Worldview, guys, where we get to talk about everything that's got to do with uh, the world and China in the world. But um, there is something we need you to do for us right now. Yes. Please. The links are pinned in the where in the chat. Uh, they're pinned in the chat and they're in the description. They're in the description. Right now, okay. Yesterday I released the video China's most obnoxious Karen. For those of you who don't know, dear Wang, dear Wang, dear Wong, um, it's you, you'll love it. Okay. It's a it's, it's a state media employee. Yeah. For propaganda. That, that, propagandist. It, it's a propagandist. Works for Xinhua, which is the biggest, the most official state media. Yeah. And uh, it's very important that you get to see this. Now, um, both of our videos that we released this week seem to have been uh, shadow banned. Okay. Now, of course, everybody claims that. They're always like, oh, my videos are shadow banned. But like, quite seriously, we really think there's something foul going on. All right. We really need your help. We need you to open that up in your browser, please. Both of them. Right now, yes. Both of the videos. Of course, and the one that you released today is very important about what happened to the... I did, a whole, I did a whole analysis and followed up with people in China that knew people that went to the protests to try to get a hold of them. And I did a whole 11-minute video on the follow-up of what happened after. Because everyone's talking about how successful the protests were. I wanted to see what happened afterwards. Yeah. Um, if you want a good laugh, you're going to want to see um, my one about China's most obnoxious Karen. And if you need to know what happened to the protesters after the protests, check out his video. But please open them up in another tab. Both of them. I want to see two of those in your tabs. And you just, don't have to watch them now. Yeah. And just give them a thumbs up. Yeah. Help us out here because they through. they are performing like the worst of the yeah. worst. And we yeah. really think there's some foul play. Um, and you, with your help, you know, we can rectify it. But we need your help. It will literally help <laughs> because it'll push them forward a little bit. So please get them open in two new tabs. Mm-hmm. Get them ready. Or at least remember to do it after the show. Yeah. And we'll sit here until you do it. Yeah, please, please. Until my internal instinct tells me you've done it. Do you think they've done it by now? I think not yet. I think mm. they need to go in the description or in the chat right here. There's a pinned thing. Yeah. They can open both of them. They don't have to watch them right now, but they can watch them later. Just get them ready. Get them loaded up for right. after the show. Okay? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Think they, do you feel it in your heart that they've done so? Maybe. Maybe you could tell a dad joke in the meantime. You know a dad joke? Um, I'll pull one up. Oh, you, you have to look up. No, actually, I, I look. I'll, t- I'll tell there. you okay, one. You, you do one. So this is when I took my kid to Disneyland, right? Um, and I was in the the hotel, Okay, and I remember you go there, you make your, your like Mickey Mouse waffles or whatever, right? Okay. And there was this guy cleaning the dishes there, and he's really shady. Really, really shady. I don't know what was with this guy. He's like this old guy, and he's like cleaning the dishes, and he, he like came up to me, and he's like, hey, you want to hear a dad joke? Like, I'm not even making this up. This is not part of the joke, by the way. This is legitimate. So the guy comes up to me, he's like, hey, you want to hear a dad joke? I'm like, This sure. is at Disney World. Yeah, this is, yeah. Okay. This is at the, like, the hotel there. Oh, okay. I'm like, sure. <laughs> so he's like, 
you hear about the the restaurant on the moon? I'm like, no. It says, excellent food, but just no atmosphere. <laughs> And he just like peaced out. And then he slept. Yeah. I'm not even joking. This is the weirdest thing. He wasn't dressed up or anything, you know, like everyone's like, oh, it's the happiest place on earth. This guy was literally just looked like a janitor, you know? He's oh, just like just a janitor that was cleaning up some dishes. I think that's epic. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah. So that's, that's So barbers. You really have to take your hat off to them. <laughs> okay, whatever. Is it well, isn't Take your hat off for them. I'm just it, it, okay, Here's whatever. Digest. Okay, good, good enough. Good enough. Let's uh, okay. Yeah, let's move on. Forward. Thank you for helping us. By the way, each and every one of you who did um, open up our videos and and click like, yes. dude, seriously, and, do, and play them out afterwards, though. Yeah, dudes and dudettes, yes. we we appreciate it very much. Yes. Anyway, let's uh, move on from our self promotion. Yes. <laughs> do it. Yeah. <laughs> and if you didn't do it before, now you're like, fine, do that. Yeah, please Go do it. Now, now we can get onto the whole uh, world yes. view thing. So what's going on here? Uh, Ukraine. This is a Ukraine story. Okay. U.S. sanctions Chinese firm in helping Russia's Wagner groups. You know, they're like third party kind of group that the... Wagner the group bidding. is like a mercenary, yeah, um, yeah. mercenary group for pretty, Russia, pretty right? Pretty scary. They... Um, Changsha, which is the capital city of Hunan province, mm-hmm. been there many times. One of the most soulless cities I've ever been to in my life, by the way. Yep. Like, it, you know, like the Soviet dystopia that you always hear about, like commie blocks and stuff? That is Changsha. There's no green. I, I'm going to be quite, quite honest with you. When it comes to all the travels through China, Hunan, other than the parts right, really bordering sort of Guizhou. Yunnan and, yeah, Guizhou yeah. and, and uh, sorry, and uh, Guangdong. Guang, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those parts, I could just forget about it's it. It's bad. It's like Hunan, you know? It's, it's just like bad. Hunan, Hunan. Yeah, no, seriously. It's, there's a lot of uh, Hunan that's absolutely gorgeous, but again, it's on those border areas yeah. with Guizhou, Yunnan, and, and uh, or sorry, uh, uh, Guangxi and Guangdong. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. Dude, area. also the, 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 f- the nationalism there, because that's where Mao yeah. Zedong comes yeah. from, right? Yeah. Dude, they just like don't Dude, they were so nasty towards it's foreigners. Kinda, it's kinda like <laughs> Dong Bay Ren in the South. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're pretty nasty to a lot of foreigners. Yeah. Anyway, uh Changsha, Tianyi mm-hmm. Space Station, uh, Space Science and Technology Research Institute, right? Mm-hmm. Is one of sixteen entities that was just slapped with curbs by the Treasury Department of the US, right? Mm-hmm. What they were doing was actually uh, giving satellite locations of enemy locations in Ukraine mm. to Russia, to the Wagner Group. Yeah, Remember, China was supposed to be having nothing to do with this. Right. Oh, we support Ukraine's sovereignty, but we also, you know, we're, we're friends with Russia, but we're not going to get any, we're not going to be part of this. Sure. We're stay out. This is your problem, right? Bullshit. Yeah, They've been back bullshit. in Russia the whole time. The whole time, financially, yeah. allowing them to use their, you know, alternative to Stripe or whatever, you know, the union pay s- system to get money in and yep. out. Energy, all that nonsense. They've been funding the freaking war, dude. Mm. Like, why is nobody paying attention to this shit? You know, all the people that are supporting Ukraine in the war, like a lot of the investment people and a lot of the people that are like uh, allied with like mm. Ukraine and that, I, at least ideologically, all right, that, that Russia's in the wrong in this situation, yeah. still are telling people to invest in China and China has nothing to do with it. Well, bullshit. Sure. They've been doing <laughs> shit the whole time. Yeah. Uh, not just not just uh, partnering uh, with Russia in terms of propaganda, but also funding the freaking war. Yeah, of right. course. It's it's obvious. Mm-hmm. Anyway, continue? Yeah, let's continue. That was, Moving just, break- on. That was just breaking, so. Right, just breaking. Uh, next, there is a new um, Human Freedom Index report. So usually my go-to, you know, I'm a stat boy. Yeah, you love stats. But my go-to. You get real boring around here. You're like, that's the, the third and a half cup of, of coffee you've drank in the past like 12 cycles or whatever you do know? you operate in cycles whatever you know what i'm saying it's always some stats sure. stats when you have your period i make sure you're not drinking coffee it's not it's not period cycles dude <laughs> I just you joking. know anyway, cpu cycles cpu cycles anyway so um <laughs> you know usually i use freedom house for for mm-hmm. anything democracy and freedom related because they have a lot of good you know yeah no you freedom know, house is great no freedom house is awesome right but mm-hmm. there's actually a, a new report which measures a couple different uh, a, a couple different measures that go into human freedom index, not just government freedom index, yeah. right? So when you go into like Freedom House, a lot of it is based on how the government operates and how free the citizens are under said government. Yeah. 
Whereas this one, this is the Fraser Fraser Institute, I believe it's called. Okay. This is measuring like the human attributes of of the Freedom Index, and this year's ranking was finished. Obviously, just finished up with twenty twenty two coming to a close. Right. And China is placed at one hundred and fifty two out of one hundred and sixty five countries in the world. And what I want people to understand is that we're still talking about China in the same breath as the you know the countries in the world like Japan and Taiwan, which are like eight and nine or whatever, right? Yeah. In the same breath, in, when we're talking about China, is down there at the bottom with it's right with the, Saudi Arabia and yeah. Somalia and Iraq. I mean, we're talking about a country that is very close to North Korea in terms of freedom index here. <laughs> sure. And I don't know why people are again to bring it back to the investment thing. Why mm. are people still telling us from a human from a human perspective to invest in China? Mm. I don't understand what you're talking about. Yeah. It's so bad. Yeah, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean. Anyway, the links in the description. It's worth a read. Yeah, if you're if you're into stats, you can stat it out. It's important. Yeah, it's important to. It's important when people don't understand how low China's uh, uh, human freedom index is to point it out how low they are on the scale. Yeah. I think it gives perspective. So, what is this Earth's inner core rotating slower than surface oh, stuff? This, this is actually kind of cool. The uh, there's some scientists in China that have measured. It was at Peking University. They've been able to measure the molten core of the Earth. Mm -hmm. And it actually, I didn't know this, but it, uh, it actually spins uh, independently of the world. Okay. On the outside, which is mm -hmm. kind of cool because it's like a liquid thing. Yeah. Um, and it's been slowing down to the point where it might even reverse direction. So the earth will be spinning one way and the core will be spinning the other way. It's kind of cool. I don't mm -hmm. know what the implications of that are, but it's pretty interesting. Why are they studying that exactly? I don't know. Why not? Why just study anything? I'm just curious. Yeah. Why, st why study stars? Why study anything? I'm glad. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm happy that they've discovered this, but I'm just sure. wondering what the uh, reasoning is for that. Yeah, they were, they, you could say they're peaking into the Earth's core. Right? <laughs> okay. Anyway, yeah, well done, Peking University. That's great. Scientific yeah. uh, discovery and breakthroughs are are awesome, and we yep. approve. Absolutely. What's this, this is something you guys need to go in the description and have a look at the article about because it, mm -hmm. we found something called the China Media Project. Mm -hmm. Well, you found this. Yeah. Oh yes, that's right. This is incredible. What an amazing project that they do. Mm -hmm. They really dive into the stuff and the themes, I should say that the big media stuff is not too scared to touch, but it's too niche, mm. but it actually carries huge implications. Right. And this one is fascinating and it's also pretty messed up. Yeah. So there is a, um, there's a space, uh, not space, uh, uh, air, an air call. I just, it's called Nanshan Hong Kong Dashue. How would you translate that? It would be like, uh, yeah, aviation, well, aviation, aviation, yeah, aviation is the correct word. Yeah, Hong Kong Gongsi is is uh, an airline. Yes. So uh, Nanchang is the capital of Jiangxi province. So this yes. university here yeah. is all about aviation, right? This one over here, yeah. And they set up this uh, Jiangxi Guoji Trimbo Yanjiu Zhongxin. That's, that's like a, it's like a cooperation or international communication like research center, right? Right. And what they've done is partner up with, I believe, a university in Iowa, and then also one in uh, in Manchester, UK, I believe. I think they've got all over the world, actually. All over the world. But these are the two examples that we use, okay, right? Okay, yeah. And what they decided to do is come up with this thing called, uh, I guess they have it here. It's uh, Yang Mei and Gao Xiao. And it's the idea is to carry out international communication. They use these buzzwords. Mm hmm to, to use overseas student resources, mm. right? So we're talking sending Chinese students abroad and then taking foreign students, right? Mm -hmm. To do an international exchange. And that sounds hunky-dory and everyone's yeah. all Yeah, it's all about, happy, right? we know exchange programs. That's yes. kind of common. You, Wonderful. You, you know, you send exchange students back and forth. Yes. But what they're doing is breaking every single idea about the wholesome. The reason that a lot of universities get away with stuff and China gets away with stuff in the education sphere is that education is just supposed to be about education. It's not yes. supposed to be about politics. It's not supposed to be about government control. It's not supposed to be about in, your influence. But in China, education is about government control. You know, education too. It's a huge yes. part of education. There is teaching you to love the party, is teaching you to obey the party. It's all part of the curriculum. Yes. So, what if I told you this mm -hmm. this university, this aviation university, seemingly yeah. innocuous one in China and Jiangxi, was partnering up with these universities to Jianghao, Zhongguo, Gushi. Where yeah. have we heard that before? It's mm -hmm. tell China's story a, well. Yeah, ch tell a good China story. Yep. And that's Xi Jinping's campaign mm -hmm. of international control to make sure that no one says anything bad about the mm -hmm. CCP mm -hmm. and that 
Chinese propaganda proliferates around the entire world, and they're getting foreign students to become propagandists on their behalf. This breaks every agreement, yeah. every agreement in the academia. Well, I mean, here's the, the the important thing about this is this is an official thing that yes. they're doing here. Yes. Because we all know, and it's been going on forever, that you've got things like the Confucius Institutes or Chinese language yeah. and cultural yeah. institutes around the world. And they get into the universities, and then they control the Chinese students that are there. Yeah. They make sure that they don't step out of line. You know, they yeah. also, if for instance, the Dalai Lama wants to come and speak or something, they make sure that that's boycotted. They yeah. also get in there and they threaten to withdraw funding or whatever if he turns up. You know, they, they basically act as an enforcement arm of the Chinese government, these institutes, right? <laughs> Chinese students um, are harassed basically and um, intimidated into staying in their lane. Yeah. Okay. By these institutes and so on, um, and they're also constantly approached by the Chinese government and things like this. This particular official program they've got going on here is all about using those students that are overseas as part of their propaganda. And look at look at the next slide. Um, so you can see an example. <clears throat> this is from a video, and a lot of this is seemingly innocuous stuff, and this is how they're they're wetting their whistle, so to speak. But they get. Oh, sorry, I didn't put it in there. It's not that. It's not, not that, that. Not that. Uh, basically, if you go in the article, there's some pictures, and there's also the links to the videos yeah, that they've the videos. done. They've gotten foreign students. You and know, people and also different... foreigners that go to China. That's what I'm talking about. They use them as... Um, they I'm talking use, about yeah. foreigners. That, this is the priority, is yeah. to use foreigners that go to China on this exchange for Chinese state propaganda. Yeah, but they also use it the opposite way around. Sure. They'll also use Chinese students that go abroad as part of this too. Yes, but the, the biggest mm -hmm. the biggest element of this is using foreign foreign students. Yes, uh, correct. That's, you know, just from, from reading through this. Yeah. Anyway, there's a lot of important information in there. You guys could should definitely check it out. It's pretty big. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge because it's official now. Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's not just what's being done behind closed doors or, yeah. you know, like kind of happening in the background. This is actually like, they're like, yeah. And it's tied directly to the propaganda department yeah. as well. So it's not like, oh, it's just the university doing it. No, oh. Chinese state propaganda department is part of this yep. so go read about it it's very interesting this yeah the guy that uh wrote mm -hmm. this and did a lot of research obviously behind us david uh bandersky he's mm -hmm. a director of the china media project very impressed with their work from yeah. what we looked through i'm very impressed with this project yeah definitely uh, so please definitely check it out it. there's a link below yep mm, okay so what is this uh mugshot you've got coming up over here well you guys is it actually related in a way in a way a kind of i guess if you wanted to do a little bit of a reach, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is related to something we talked about before. The Department of Justice uh, got this dude, right? Uh, his name was Xu Yanjun. Yes. He was the Deputy Division Director in the MSS, so the Ministry of State Security. So that's China. like the CIA of China. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, and what was happening is that this guy was all about getting uh, aerospace and satellite technology. Yes. They got him, chucked him in jail for 20 years in federal prison, right? Yeah. So it was like catching a big spy, basically. They, right? Where did they extradite him from? They, extra, they, they got him to meet... There's quite a story yeah. behind it. Yeah, it's pretty it. cool. I guess they got him to meet like somebody that was posing as a, another yeah. Chinese spy. Yes. But it was actually FBI or something. Yeah, but they didn't meet them in, in the US. I met, met him met somewhere, somewhere else. else. And then yeah. I can't remember the story, but it's pretty fascinating. It if you like spycraft. Cool. Yeah, it's good spycraft yeah. stuff. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so they got him, right? Big, yeah. big catch, Yeah. right? But to follow up to this is the next picture. Mm -hmm. They got the guy under him too. One of them. One of them, which is very big because this guy was working his way up through the ranks, okay? Mm -hmm. This dude here, he looks quite tall, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. uh, Ji Chao Chun. He was just, uh, I guess he was just convicted of one count of conspiracy to act as an agent of a foreign government. So mm -hmm. that's when, basically, when you're in America and you're acting on behalf of a foreign government, whether it's whatever, I don't know, propaganda or spying mm -hmm. or doing whatever, but you don't disclose it to the U.S. government. You don't yeah. say, hey, I'm here on behalf of blah, 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 right? Well, he was just a college student. Well, I'm, I'm getting to that. Yeah. And also, uh, one count of acting as an agent of the People's Republic of China without first notifying the Attorney General. Right. And one count of making a material false statement to the U.S. Army, U.S. District. Um, so think about this. This guy started in the uh, U.S. Armed Forces, right? This guy didn't. He's a college student. He was in the U.S. Armed yeah, Forces? Yeah, no, he joined the reserve. He joined yeah. the reserve program, but he was first yeah. a college student. Yes, yes, yes. And he was Initially. approached during there. Like, that's right. the, the whole thing is like... Remember this whole idea of using yep. foreign students yep. as a resource? Yeah. 
This is a perfect example of that. Yeah. It is the example of that because he came to study. Where was he? Which college was he in? Uh, he was in, I don't want to screw this up. The first guy was in yeah. uh, Southern District of Ohio. This guy was uh, enlisted in the U.S. Army Reserves under the military accessions, the vital and national interest program. Mm -hmm. um, this is in Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, it's an ex-Chicago ex student, a college student is what yes. he was. Yes. I got it right here, dude. Yeah, okay. Um, anyway, so the idea was that this guy that you saw before him, mm -hmm. he was was working with this dude, right? Yeah. And he got him, he was get, basically getting him to find out who was working in the U.S. government, like, tied stuff, so that they could find Chinese people that had moved to the U.S. to work in these special government contracts in the U.S. and yeah. then, you know, leak out information from them. Um, Roosevelt class aircraft carriers were the priority. I yeah, he. That's one of the things that he said he could do because yeah. um, he basically was studying. Yeah. Okay. And then um, let's let me get this right here. Okay. It says. Um, da, 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 okay. I just want to see what's going on here. Uh, let's see. Okay. This is part of this. This. Okay. He was targeted by agents with Chinese China's MSS yep. shortly before coming to Chicago in 2013. So this before he even came to China. I know. I, I, mean, to, I, I know. Yeah. He was already yeah. a spy. <laughs> so he was already like, they find out, oh, you're going to go study in America. Yep. Yep. Here's the thing. Like, how about you help us out? Okay. It was a long game, dude. So, I mean, and he went to study electrical engineering at IIT, a small private school yeah, just east of Dan Ryan Expressway, blah, 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 which had forged educational ties with Chinese universities and yep. colleges. So yep. it's exactly what we've been yep. talking about. That's why it ties in. Uh, so after traveling back to China during winter break, he was wined and dined by MSS handlers and eventually given a top secret contract where he swore an oath of allegiance to the agency's cause, yep. agreeing, agreeing to devote the rest of his life to state security. Um, by entering the state of another country. <laughs> yeah, but you know, the thing is, he he took a photo of his contract with the MSS, yeah. which is kind of dumb. Of oh, him. I mean, this he screwed um, up. My favorite part of this, though, mm -hmm. is listen to this. Yeah. He also explained that once he obtained his U.S. citizenship and security clearance through the Mavni program, right? Yeah. He would seek a job at the CIA, FBI, or NASA. Yes. So he was going to go. The CIA, they, they groomed him to like go all the way up. Yeah, you know, and the, the problem is, it's just how easy it is for um, this kind of uh, th these loopholes to be exploited. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so he comes over to study. Um, he's he does a good job studying. He, he's he's currently yeah. he's currently an agent already because yeah. he's agreed to and signed contracts with the MSS. Um, he uh, started to find out um, uh, the information about scientists yeah. and people in the military who were of Chinese heritage. So either yeah. Taiwanese or, or Chinese, yes. like Chinese Americans, and Taiwanese Americans. And he sent that information of these specific individuals that he thought could be compromised yeah. to his handlers. Hey, these are good marks. You know, yeah, it's like, like this guy looks good. This guy looks good. Um, let's see, what else did he do? He also, he also said that he would be able to, because he enrolled in this reservist, military reservist program here in America where that means that you become like a reservist military dude. And that gives you certain clearance to go to certain places. Yeah. And so he was saying he would be able to use his military clearance to take photos of aircraft carriers and things to yeah. send him back to his handlers yeah. and all that kind of nonsense, which is dumb. Um, and he sent, he sent his attachments through his email saying yeah. they were term papers, but it was the information about all these scientists and, and people working in the aerospace industry or whatever that should be targeted, right? Yeah. Um, what else did he do? I think we get the idea. I don't need to dwell on this too much. Well, I mean, at the end of the day... It was a big catch. It was whoops. a big catch. It's, it's important to realize that these programs that the Chinese government enacts mm -hmm. are real. Yeah. And they are a real yeah. threat. Yeah. At the same time, we shouldn't be trying to profile Chinese students and say, oh, shit, there's a spy no. over there. No. Don't do anything like that. But at the same time... When you've got a Chinese student coming from China to study very in a specific, specific thing things. and they start asking very specific questions, they should probably be looked into a little bit. G intended to perform cybersecurity work at one of those agencies so he would have access to all their databases, including databases that can contain scientific research. When yes. you have those intentions, yeah. that's when you look into someone. Right? Yeah. That's when you figure this out. 
Guy's fresh off the boat and he's yeah. studying in college and he's trying wants, to get into the national yeah. interest program. And he starts asking um, you if you know anyone in yeah. in the military security or whatever the case might be in national security, you know, then maybe you should be uh, taking that as a red flag. Yes. Because we know now officially that the Chinese government officially does this kind of thing yep. and has these kind of programs. Yep. So, you know, this is important to to keep track of. So anyway, he was sentenced, uh, I believe, to the other eight day. Years. Eight years. Uh, to a couple of days ago, yeah. To eight years. So that's another another catch. And it's just another thing that you need to, you know, that law enforcement needs to pay attention to. I, I mean, I just don't like how blasé a lot of this stuff is. And it's easy to be blasé because when you're in America, I get it, right? I yeah. get it. I'm a foreigner here. I get treated like I'm uh, just like okay. anybody else. Yeah. You know, nobody treats me any differently. No. I have a driver's license just like anyone else that I use for my ID. It doesn't say foreigner on it. You know, sometimes, you know, we're in the rural sticks of Pennsylvania. People are like, you know, oh, that's an interesting accent. Yeah, they might. From. Yeah, sure, yeah. That, that's whatever. But, mm-hmm. you know, you've got bloody Mennonites and whatever the hell yeah. else out here with weird accents. So it doesn't matter. That's very true. You know, like we're trying Amish to figure dude. this out. We have not to give away their names or anything. But <laughs> yeah. We have some neighbors that mm-hmm. are Menon- ex Mennonites. Yes. They're not Mennonites anymore, but they literally sound like they're German. Now, yeah. I understand Amish people speak German, right? Yeah. But these are Mennonites, and they speak English as their predominant language, but they have, like, a German accent. Yeah, it's we're really to, weird. We're trying to figure it out without being rude. Yeah, anyway. yeah. So, so, I mean, the thing is, you, you, you think that, like, okay, everything's cool. You just carry on, and yeah. you can do whatever you want. But, I mean, just think, the, think of the reverse, yes. right? Just imagine. Just imagine, okay, when we were in China, we, we're like, hey, I'm studying in a Chinese university now. Let me contact the CIA and <laughs> yeah. say, hey, you know what? I'm in China. I want to spy. I'm just going to work my way up the ranks, yeah. you know? Like, let me, let sign me get it. myself into yeah. the government programs yeah. and I'll become a citizen of China. Which is impossible, really. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. If you're it's a Chinese American. The yeah. literal hypocrisy of yeah. all this. It's like, like you couldn't even have the same opportunity. Yeah, you couldn't. But yeah. it's just dumb to... to to do something like that. Yeah. I yeah. would never even attempt to do something yeah. like that. Like, why even, you know, if you're going to treat a country like your enemy, why even try to go live there and study there and whatnot? Like, don't. Just don't. You know? Yeah. It's, it's a horrible system. Anyway, it's time for Q&A, guys. <laughs> Yamcha. This is where we get to answer your questions and you question our answers. Um, also, the part of the show where I get to loosen the tie and we just get to chill out and relax a little bit. It's Friday after all. And um, you can watch it over the weekend uh, or watch it live now. And we cut it out of the show on Monday. But if you would like to watch the whole thing unadulterated, if you're not watching it live now or on the weekend, you can always go over to patreon.com forward slash ADV podcast. If you join any tier, you will be uh, able to access the full show with all the Q&A, all the previous shows with all the Q&As. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Maybe you've got a lot of time to kill. Okay. Yeah. But you have access to all that and you get access to our Discord server too. You do. Anyway, listen to the tie and let's hit it. I, I love the Google know-it-alls, by the way. Oh, yeah, like, we're like, what is their accent, right? Now, I, they're, everyone's like, it's Dutch. Everyone's like, it's Dutch. It's a Dutch accent because they think Pennsylvania Dutch is Dutch. Pennsylvania Dutch is not Dutch. And we know this from being here. Yeah. We've learned this. Don't try to be a Google know-it-all. Pennsylvania Dutch is German. Mm-hmm. It's just called Dutch. It has nothing to do with Dutch. Yeah, I can understand Dutch quite well. Yeah. And Pennsylvania the Dutch, Dutch accent, is not even related. It's, it's not that, yeah. Anyway, it is. It is. I just uh, I figured it out. Some people explain um, the Mennonites speak uh, Pennsylvania Dutch just like the Amish people do. Oh, okay. That's, that's why. Now, 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 now I'm comfortable to ask. Now we know. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, shall we uh, begin? Let's do it. Oh, yeah. And for those of you who are currently um, not watching on the weekend,